Welcome to this edition of Lakeside Physics. Today we'll be talking about Newton's first law. Now according to Newton himself, every body perseveres in its state of being at rest or of moving uniformly straight forward except in so far as it is compelled to change its state by forces impressed. Whew. We usually just say, an object at rest will stay at rest, an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by unbalanced forces. Note that when we talk about in motion, what we mean is a constant speed in a straight line, or constant velocity. This is also sometimes known as the law of inertia. Inertia is the tendency of an object to remain unchanged, to stay at rest if it is rest, or stay in motion if it is in motion. Inertia as a property is quantified by an object's mass. The greater the object's mass, the greater its inertia. This concept was also known and discussed by people such as Galileo and Descartes before Newton. When will there be a constant state of motion? Well, kind of coming back to what Newton's first law said, you will have a constant state of motion when there are no unbalanced forces acting on an object. This is not to say there are no forces acting on an object, just no unbalanced forces acting on, a, on an object. So all the rights will equal lefts, all the ups forces will equal down forces. Mathematically, this is that all force vectors are balanced and their vector sum will be equal to zero. So we can break this up just as I was talking about into the x direction and the y direction. So the sum of forces in the horizontal direction needs to be equal to zero and the sum of the forces in the vertical direction needs to be equal to zero. When all force vectors are balanced and thus the system is unchanging, we say this is the system is in equilibrium. So our definition of equilibrium is not at rest, but instead a constant state of motion. Let's just do a quick example with vectors, looking at three vectors acting on a single box. Five newtons, four newtons, and three newtons. So if we add these together by using our um, tail to head method, we can take our five newtons, take the tail of our three newtons and put it to the head of the five newtons. And likewise with our four newton vector, we see that it all comes up and adds to zero. So some basic steps for solving force problems. I'm going to give you two different versions for solving the same problem. The first is um, what you'll often do if it's a simple problem that you can sort of do in your head. The second will be more rigorous and suggested for you, I suggest using it for problems that are a little bit more difficult to solve. So first is uh, draw a free body diagram. This is going to be the case often. On your diagram, write down known values. Break up the diagonal forces into x components and y components. If in equal, equilibrium, balance the ups and downs and the rights and lefts. If it is not in equilibrium, find the net force by comparing the ups and downs and the rights and lefts. So here's our example. We have an 80 newton box that is suspended by two ropes as shown. What is the tension in the red rope? So again, our step one, draw the free body diagram. Step two on the diagram, write down your knowns. So since it's an 80 newton box, we know the force of gravity or its weight is 80 newtons downward. We break up our tension two, which is off at an angle into an X component and a Y component. And we notice that if it's in equilibrium, the, down, the ups need to equal the downs. So if I have 80 newtons down, I must have 80 newtons up. So the force of the tension in the string 2 in the y direction should be 80 newtons. Notice the variable I'm using for the force is F sub T2y to represent the tension in rope 2 in the y direction. Now, I will quickly notice that I have this strange angle, the 53.13 degrees, and so I know this must be a 345 triangle. So if the one side is 80 newtons, the other side must be 60 newtons. If I did not know this, I could still use trig to solve it. I have one side and one angle. I can solve for any of the other sides since it's a right angle. So, once I know that the tension 2 in the x direction has to be 60 newtons, my rights need to equal my lefts, so the tension in the string 1 must also be equal to 60 newtons. So let's consider a more rigorous 
way of solving this problem. First, write down what you were trying to, si to solve for. Draw a free body diagram. Pick a direction of motion that you're going to deal with first. So either deal with the x direction or the y direction. Write the sum of the force equations for the direction of the motion. Set the net force equal to zero, or if it's moving, set the net force equal to mass times acceleration. Solve substituting as necessary. If you get stuck, pick a new direction or a new concept. So let's go back to our problem. What is the tension in the red rope? So note we're first we're trying to find FT1. We'll define that as T1. And we're going to draw a free body diagram. And we will pick a direction to solve for. Since we're looking for FT1, it makes sense to try to solve for the x direction, the sum of the forces in the x direction. And we're going to write down a sum of forces equation. So the sum of forces in the x direction must be equal to FT2x minus FT1, which needs to equal to zero since we have an object in equilibrium. Now using my triangle, I can see that FT2x is FT2 times cosine of 53.13 degrees, and again minus the FT1. At this point, I'm stuck. I don't have either no FT1 or FT2, so I need to consider looking in the other direction, in the y direction. The sum of the forces in the y direction is going to be my ups minus my downs, FT2y minus the weight. So again, I can put this in terms of my trig, FT2 sine of 53.13 degrees minus the known weight. This now allows us to solve for the tension in string 2, which is 100 newtons. Now we can plug this back into our x direction equation to allow us to solve for the tension in string 1, which we find, as we did in the previous problem, that is 60 newtons. So again, I wouldn't suggest using this method of solving if you have a problem such as this basic static box, but you will find many situations where using this more rigorous approach is going to be necessary to be able to solve the problem. So as a quick summary, Newton's first law, objects at rest remain at rest, objects in motion remain in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. We'll be doing some fun demos with this. Let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.